Hello there! So I've heard all of your requests to make another Remnote video, so here it is. Today, I'll share how I use Remnote and how you can design your personal workflow. This video will cover most of the basics of Remnote and dive a little bit deeper into some of the features that I use that are a little bit more advanced. If you haven't seen my first video on Remnote, make sure to click on the little bubble that pops up on the screen now, or check the description to make sure you get all the benefits out of this wonderful app. Watch that video first and then come back to this one because I'll be proceeding under the assumption that you've already seen the other one. The goal is that by the end of this video, you'll be able to handle yourself with knowing pretty much the main things about Remnote and you won't have to spend forever looking through all of the tutorials and figuring out all of the nitty gritty details. Make sure to go through this video a few times and stop when it's necessary because I'm going to be speeding through a lot of this. Alright, so just getting started with Remnote, if this is your first time accessing the site, make sure to create an account. Head over to remnote.io and just click get started and then click sign up. I personally log in through Google, but either way, just make sure that you're able to save your data into your account so that it won't be lost. So after you've created an account, you can start making notes right away. So let's get down to a few of the basics. I'm going to try to explain this process in the simplest way possible, since I was actually a little bit confused when first starting out. Pretty much anything that you type down is called a REM, or essentially it's just a bullet point or a note that you are trying to remember. Make sure you get that down, because Remnote uses a lot of really fancy and specific terminology, and you'll need to follow along with that. All right. So next, there's two main types of these REMs, either a concept or a descriptor. Remnote uses its own hierarchy system that works pretty nicely. So the big system is what they call this concept descriptor framework. The concept is basically the main bullet point or REM that you're referring to. So typically for me, it's basically a main idea or something that I'm memorizing as a key term. Type out the name of the term with a capital letter first, followed by two colons. As we know, our end product is a flashcard, so the colons are basically a division for the front and back sides of your flashcard. The left side of the colons will be bolded as the name for your concept. Moving on, a descriptor is anything that is nested under your main concept. You do the exact same thing with a descriptor by adding those two colons after your concept. The term becomes italicized before your notes and the definition or whatever information that you're writing down, and it's just used with a lowercase letter instead of an uppercase one. This will also show up in those flashcards. So going down on your hierarchy, you have what they call a top level rem at the very top, obviously, which is basically your document or your folder or whatever your biggest rem file is. For me, this is usually a folder for a class that includes some documents, which within those include more rems and more documents. I should probably note here that documents are also what they call rems. So make sure not to confuse those two as different things. This is the same thing with folders. Folders are REMs too. So make sure that you know that all of these things that you're creating on Remnote are all REMs. Don't confuse yourself with that. So following this downwards, we have REMs that are called parents, which is pretty much any of those documents or subfolders or title bullet points or really anything that is a main point. After that, we have what we call children, which are just any of those descriptors we said earlier or really any sub bullet point that is nested within another bullet point or rem or document, if that makes any sense at all. So basically, as you can see here, these descriptors or these little bullet points are all children documents. Okay. So if you need any clarification on those concepts, please do ask me in the comments section because I'm trying to make this as clear as possible for you. The hierarchy has a really great philosophy behind it so that you're able to structure your knowledge in the best way possible by breaking down all of these complex subjects that you're studying. All right, so now that you have the hierarchy down, let's go jump into some of the other types of REMs. Tags are also REM. So Tagging is just a way for you to link your notes and find all of your related REM in one place without explicitly linking them. And I'll distinguish these two topics a little bit later. 
For example, I've used tags for equations by using hashtag equation to memorize those equations that I need to know. I can also do this with definitions by typing hashtag definition and then find all of the definitions that I've ever typed or tagged with that label. You can form these tabs by typing two hashtags or pound symbols on your laptop. Think of this as a hashtag on Twitter or Instagram. Quick plug, go follow me on Twitter and Instagram at notes with Ren, where I will be posting some really exclusive content. Okay, jumping back in, tagging can also be used for you to make templates where you can fill in slots for your knowledge based on a format that you might be using a lot of the time. So if you're following a certain format for your notes, this could be extremely helpful. For me, I've used these templates to design some study guides that are just a summary of my knowledge. For this, go to your settings and turn on templates for knowledge features. Tags are especially helpful for organizing your notes too, since you're able to sort your notes by tags by selecting filter document by this tag by right clicking on that specific tag. Another super fun feature is portals. Portals, like I said in my other video, are basically a little window into another document or REM. So instead of just a copy and paste, which is a really boring way for you to format your notes, you can add this little live view of what is going on in another document. So for me, this has been really helpful when I'm linking ideas, but too lazy to actually click over to another document. This is great for multitasking and viewing a few documents in just one place. Okay, so to create a portal, you have to go to the bottom right corner of your screen where it says add a portal. And through this, you can search up any REM that you've ever created and you're able to import that directly into your screen. So here I'm importing my portal from my physics REM. Okay, so to build on this, you're even able to add search portals, which are just ways for you to pull up every place where you've mentioned a specific word. You can do this by typing slash search, and then you can add that search portal into your page. I use these in study guides to give myself an idea of every note page where a topic was mentioned. In other words, this feature can be really helpful for compiling any information from all of your REM by just looking at a specific word. Now, all right, let's get to the part that you are probably looking forward to, linking. In REM, links are called references. You can create a reference by typing two open brackets followed by the name of the content that you're trying to link. Within different REMs, you're able to link anything to a REM pretty simply. I'm not going into the benefits of linking in this video, but you can check out my other videos on RemNote and Obsidian where I talk about it in a lot more depth. So to distinguish between tags and references, the main differences is that tags are referring to an entire line of text, while references are just a few words that you are looking at. So through here, you can type other words following that reference specifically, and then you're able to only look at that one word. Tags will instead apply to your entire line of text. Okay, great. So you've got down the main points of RemNote, but let's go a little bit deeper into formatting and viewing your REM, which is honestly just as important as understanding the basic functions. So far, just with basic text editing, you're able to bold, underline, italicize, and highlight your notes. You can do any of these things by just typing out your text and then selecting the words. There's a little menu that pops up and then you can use the commands on there to customize your text by bolding, underlining, italicizing, etc. For me, I like to change mainly the background color, which they call highlighting in this case, in my notes, and it just adds a little splash of color to keep myself engaged when reviewing everything. It also helps me focus on the text to distinguish concepts and know when I'm moving on to a new idea. You can also do this by just typing a slash and then the color of your highlight, which is a really quick shortcut. You can format the display of your bullet points as well by selecting the toolbar at the bottom of the page and then clicking on the style that you'd like to change it to. You have a few options there. Also notice that in the toolbar at the bottom of the page, you have the option to change your text as well with highlighting and changing your headings. To embed media, you have a few different options. With pictures, just go ahead and drag the picture onto your page, or you can type slash image, which will allow you to pick an image and put the URL into your page. Another option is to just directly 
copy and paste your URL onto your REM. Same with video, audio, or a YouTube video, you can just go ahead and type slash video and then input the link there. You are able to use certain documents as reference sources by putting their links into the document sources in the source section at the top of a REM document. This way, you can go back and see what document you are taking notes of. So right here, there's a grayed out section that says no source, and then we can go ahead and add that article link up there. You can go back and find the document that you were using when you were typing that note, which is extremely helpful. I've personally used this when taking notes from articles for any subjects that I've been studying as supplemental material. So moving on, let's talk about the different options you have to view your REM. First of all, you're able to zoom into your REM and focus on any bullet point you want. You can do this by clicking on the bullet point. The benefits of this are explained in my other Remnote video, so make sure to check that out again. Another option is to hide certain REM by clicking on the little triangle that appears on the side. So by clicking it once, you're able to hide the information under that and fold that little piece of information. By clicking it once more with the triangle facing down, you are unhiding that information. So we're going to go into the whole flashcard process now. There's a few different types of cards that you can create. The most basic version is just a single line card, which is just one line of straight information with the definition on top. This is done by typing those two colons we talked about earlier. If you type three colons, you're adding a few bullet points underneath your main concept, and those will show up on your card too. You can also do this with numbered lists by typing two colons and a number one followed by a period. To hide any information you want in a rem for your flashcard to test yourself, just select the text and then click the close button. You can also type just two little squiggly brackets before your closed or hidden information. All right, so while you're reviewing your flashcards, you have, once again, a few different options. You have a global queue of cards, which is just found on your homepage on the left side of the page. Another option is your folder queue, which you can find by hovering over your folder, and then over here it says practice rem in the folder. You can do the same with a document by opening up a document queue by clicking on the document and then clicking on the three little dots on the side to open up that document menu and then click practice rem in this folder using either spaced repetition or no space repetition. You can practice those rem by yourself within that document if you desire to do that specifically. Another important point is that there's a ton of really great keyboard shortcuts on REM, which you can access by clicking this little button on the bottom left corner. These can speed up your workflow so much if you're able to memorize all of them. If you guys would like a helpful guide on all of those, or at least the most useful ones, please let me know in the comments below. But this video would go on forever if I added them here, so I'm definitely not going to do that. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope that I could help some of you out who are excited to try out Remnote. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments as I'm trying to make this as clear as possible, but I'm sure that I missed some information. Please drop a like while you're at it and subscribe and turn on those notifications. Thanks friends, I'll see you soon.